Good morning, guys. Welcome to Whitewater Christian Children's Church Watch Party. Today, again, we're going to learn all about our Psalms. And then um, this is our last lesson on Psalms. But we're going to have some fun, I hope. What are some of the things that you guys need to create a great party? Do you know? What do we do at parties? We usually eat, right? So we need snacks. Mom, we need some snacks. Well, what kind of snacks do we need? Hmm. Maybe some punch? Nah, we want, we want pop, right? How about some Coke or Pepsi or Mountain Dew? That'll really make us hyper with our party. And we need, what kind of snacks do we need? Pizzas? Maybe. Or cake? Ice cream? Depends on what kind of party I guess you're having. Or we could go to the boring, you know, veggies and fruits. <laughs> Those are old people parties, right? Or and then what else do we need for our party? Games? Fun? Right? Well, you know what? We're going to talk about um, a celebration that we have. Oh, and we forgot our decorations, too. And confetti. Sometimes parties have confetti. What a mess. But they're fun, aren't they? So now we have a party, a celebration, and it has balloons and decorations. And we've been learning all about psalms and psalms of thanksgiving to God, psalms of hope in God during troubled times, and now psalms of celebration. Did you know that David celebrated? He and the Israelite people knew how to celebrate. They celebrated with music and singing and dancing. I didn't mention those, did I? Their festive choruses were a feature of wedding ceremonies. They used music and dancing to show their thanksgiving to God. And when they finished harvesting, harvesting food and gathering grapes, they always had a celebration. Or when their armies were victorious, they would meet with songs of celebration when the warriors returned home. Now, do we celebrate when our soldiers come home? You see it on TV all the time, don't you? We do celebrate because it is a happy time. So when King David returned the ark to Jerusalem, there was a party, a praise party. Do we have praise parties at church? Every Sunday morning, don't we? Usually Caleb leads us in praise, and that's a praise party. That's a celebration. That's praising God and thanking Him for what He's done for us. In 2 Samuel 6, 5, it says, David and all Israel were celebrating with, their, with all their might before the Lord with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, systems and symbols. There was even dancing, 2 Samuel 6, 14 through 15 says, wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. And like any good party, there was cake. David gave a loaf of bread, a, a loaf of bread, a cake of dates and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went to their homes. And you'll find that in 2 Samuel 6.19. So today we're going to learn about the Psalms of praise and victory. It's a praise party because we have victory in Jesus. The Ark of God was a large, beautiful box covered in gold. The ark and what was inside, two pieces of stone with the Ten Commandments on them. Aaron's staff and some pieces of manna were symbols of God's leading in his protection. There we go. That's the ark of God. Oh no! One day, does that say oh no? 
One day the Israelites were facing a battle against the Philistines. They said, let's carry the ark with us into the battle for good luck. Things weren't going very good. And the Philistines won the battle and captured the ark. Oh no. The ark of God was so powerful that the statues the Philistines worshiped fell over in its presence. The ark of God wasn't in its rightful place and the power of God's presence wrecked havoc for the Philistines. And they said, the ark of God must not stay here. How can we send it back to the place it belongs? And after seven months the Philistines, of uh, being in the Philistines territory, the ark of God was put on a special cart and taken to Abinadab's house on the hill. There the ark remained throughout the judgeship of Samuel and the reign of God. Well, maybe it was God's plan that that ark didn't, that the Israelites didn't win and the Philistines took over that ark. Do you suppose? Sometimes things that seem bad aren't always bad. It's God's plan. Years and years later, when David had become king, he made it his mission to return the ark of God to where it belonged. God's promised land, Jerusalem, that's where it belonged. The city of David. David assembled the best of the best of Israel's armies to recover the ark of God. The return of the ark, the men carefully carried the chest of God. They had to be careful not tipping it too, too much to the left or too far to the right. Step by step they made their way to Jerusalem and they set it in the middle of a special tent that David had prepared for it. And then we had a praise party. Yay! The return of the ark to Jerusalem was a big occasion. David led the parade. Everyone was singing at the top of their lungs and playing their instruments. David dressed in special priest clothing and danced with great abandon before God. David's family were a little embarrassed by his dancing because he probably couldn't dance very well. In God's presence, I'll dance all I want. Oh yes, I'll dance to God's glory. More recklessly even than this. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll gladly look like a fool. Psalms 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant in everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. We have victory in the name of Jesus. Did you know that? Just like David, we can celebrate and give God glory and praise when great things happen. We can dance. We can sing. We can praise God when situations turn around. God's word, the Psalms, give us wisdom for life. Well, wasn't that fun? Okay, we're going to be on a winning team. We are on a winning team because God always prevails. Have you guys ever been on a team? Or maybe in PE you get broke up into two teams and everybody, the leader picks which team so-and-so is going to be on? Well, and whoever wins is the winning team, right? In life, you're already there. You're already on the winning team. Jesus has chosen you. Not have to be the last person chosen either. He's chosen you. John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Jesus is the captain of this team.
and we're on his team, right? So 1 Corinthians 15.57 says, But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you're facing troubled times or challenges and tough times, you can always go to God because he's on your, he's leader of your team and he will help you through it and you can be victorious. You can be the winner. Even through troubled times, we can celebrate and know that God's going to take care of us. And we can be on the winning team because we have victory in Jesus. So we can celebrate even before the battle is won because no matter what happens, we're chosen and we're victorious. God's on our side. Deuteronomy 24 tells us, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies and to give you victory. Give God the glory. Know who's leading you and know that you're going to win. Okay. So David danced. Cool. Could you see Adam dancing? Maybe he should dance. Because we have victory, right? Yeah. And Caleb dances when he's singing and praising God. So we dance during a whole bunch of different celebrations, don't we? Sometimes we dance when there's a New Year's party or Valentine's Day party or Thanksgiving or Christmas or a birthday or a wedding. When David brought the ark to God back to Jerusalem, there was a huge party. He led the parade with everyone cheering and praising. They were praising God. David was having a praise party because the Ark of God was being returned to Jerusalem, where it belonged. The Ark of God represented God's presence and protection of his people. The Ark had been in the possession of the Philistines since they had captured it in a battle. And it took years and years and years before David brought the ark back to its home with God's people. There was a great reason to have a praise party. 2 Samuel 6, 21 through 22 tells us, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. David danced with joy. He didn't care what he looked like. His joy overflowed and he danced like a fool. Like any good party, this praise party even had cake. And at the end of the celebration, David gave everyone cake to take home. I love cake. Do you guys celebrate when something great happens? Do you sing? Do you dance? Do you throw a party? We have victory in Jesus' name, and that's cause for a praise party. So, how did David praise God? David wrote psalms, or a lot of psalms, in the songs of praise to God. And when the ark was returned to Jerusalem, David led a praise party. Why do we have victory in Jesus' name? Does anybody know? We have victory because Jesus died on the cross for us. And he rose again so that we could have a relationship with God. Through Jesus, we are on God's team, the winning team. We have victory in Jesus' name. We can celebrate even before the battle is won because no matter what happens, we're chosen and we're victorious. God is on our side. Deuteronomy 24 tells us, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you and against your enemies to give you victory. Remember that. How can we give God the glory for our life or in our life? How do we give glory? Hmm. Do we always go around singing and praising? No, not always. But we should. We should always praise in our heart and in our mind. And when something great happens, we should give God the glory and the praise for it. We should thank Him for it. How do we thank Him? Through prayer, 
through living the life he wants us to live? Did you know before you were born, he planned on you? And he has plans for you as you grow and as you get stronger and grow into adulthood? Even you guys, as young as you are, God has a plan for you. And he wants you to give him glory by serving him. And that's all we have for today. And next time we meet, which will be September 6th, I believe, we'll be talking about Proverbs. And that's a book of wisdom. Bye. See you next time.